Hello, it's Monday, July the 27th, and we continue our mini Bible series as this week we begin to look at the lessons and the readings for Sunday, August the 2nd. Already it's August. So welcome, and today we will be looking at the first reading for Sunday, the ninth Sunday after Pentecost. The reading comes from the Old Testament prophet Isaiah in the 55th chapter, verses 1 through 5. I begin by reading the introduction and the reading for you. God invites Israel to a great feast at which both food and drink are free. God also promises to make an everlasting covenant with all peoples, with promises that previously had been limited to Israel. As David was a witness to the nations, these nations shall now acknowledge the ways in which God has glorified Israel. The reading begins. Ho, everyone who thirsts, come to the waters, and you who have no money, come, buy, and eat. Come, buy wine and milk without money and without price. Why do you spend your money for that which is not bread, and your labor for that which does not satisfy? Listen carefully to me, and eat what is good, and delight yourselves in rich food. Incline your ear and come to me. Listen, so that you may live. I will make with you an everlasting covenant, my steadfast, sure love for David. See, I made him a witness to the peoples, a leader and commander for the peoples. See, you shall call nations that you do not know, and nations that do not know you shall run to you because of the Lord your God the Holy One of Israel, for he has glorified you. When one reads the message of Isaiah through the lens of this 21st century North America, um, our filter helps us to miss, unintentionally, but we do miss out on understanding the brutal historical realities of Israel and Judah, the shadow of imperial power, which they suffered under for centuries, but in this case, the Babylonian Empire, dominates their history. The agricultural life was a challenge because of the climate, low rainfall, significant heat, uh, dramatic cold, mediocre soil at best. So maybe picture the worst year that American farmers have suffered and you will have a pretty normal picture for Israel and Judah every year. The prologue to the book of Isaiah in the 14th century Wycliffe Bible claims that Isaiah is not only a prophet, he is a good news preacher. In other words, He's an evangelist. For those to whom is Isaiah is preaching, I imagine this sounds like really good news. Either that or so much pie in the sky. Something that's pleasant to contemplate, although it's very unlikely it will ever be realized. So the idea of eating and drinking without having to pay a large cost which was their normal, is really outside of their experience. They just can't even fathom that. So the book of Isaiah played an important role also in terms of the early Christian church, trying to understand who is this Jesus in relation to the God of Israel? Was Jesus the long-expected Messiah that so many were hoping for. Many of our readings for Christmas and also for Easter include passages from Isaiah. The language in this Sunday reading imagines uh, a new creation initiated by and through Jesus the Christ. A new creation 
marked by outrageous abundance rather than scarcity and hardship. The Babylonian exiles find themselves suffering the consequences of being disobedient to Yahweh and serving other gods. In spite of God fulfilling God's promises to them into the land, the promised land of Israel, and in spite of God's faithfulness to the covenant, the Hebrews have put their trust in other gods, gods other than Yahweh at least. This is the backdrop for the vision that the prophet paints in Sunday's first reading, and which serves as a solution to their idolatry. Repentance, right? Repentance means that 180 degree change of heart. Turn completely around and back to God. So this reading opens with a series of imperatives. Come, buy, eat, listen, delight, behold. Please note that the vision that Isaiah describes here is, is not presented as something that's optional. It's, it's commanding. It is Yahweh's reality into which the listener is invited. There is not a truly viable alternative. This everlasting covenant that Yahweh promises to the people is new life. The economy of God's promise in this reading is not built on the scarcity of exile. It is built on God's abundance, overflowing abundance. So this is essentially a stewardship message, a message about the Babylonian captivity deciding, and the captives of his, the Israelites, deciding who will they trust with their future. The enemy, Babylonia? Or God. So these people that Isaiah is preaching to, they're already living a life of scarcity. They are truly dirt poor, and honestly, even the dirt is not that good. The invitation to God's preferred future for them begins with references to material things water, wine milk, bread, and so on. These bodily needs are going to be provided. And the Lord asks the question, why do you spend your money on that which is not bread, and your labor for that which does not satisfy? Listen carefully to me, and eat what is good, and delight yourselves in rich food. This promise of outrageous abundance opens the way for hearing the promise of a renewed covenant, an everlasting covenant. Isaiah's language about the everlasting covenant again begins with sustenance, free and abundant for all people, water, milk, wine, bread. This is a physical sustenance that not only feeds the people of Israel, but expands outward toward the rest of the world. Yahweh's steadfast, sure love increases to welcome those outside of Israel, what the Jews would call Gentiles, as if there really is no such thing in God's world as those inside and those outside. Isaiah says in verse 5, You shall call nations that you do not know. God's outrageous abundance. That's the center of the everlasting covenant. And it spills outside of any boundaries that anyone may try to place upon it. God promises 
and God delivers. And this defies people from turning God's gifts into anything that is a kind of merchandise to sell. It dashes against whatever economic systems people might create or tolerate. God's steadfast, sure love is not underwritten by notions of scarcity. God's steadfast, sure love is an attitude of abundance, something that cannot be contained. This is God's new creation. Isaiah, the evangelist, the bringer of good news, calls the people of Israel to a 100 and degree change of heart, a complete turnaround from relying on other gods and the enemy and returning to worship Yahweh alone. Isaiah reports God saying, incline your ear and come to me. Listen so that you may live. Thank you for joining me today. We will continue the journey in the next few days as we prepare for the ninth Sunday after Pentecost, August the 2nd, 2020. Have a great day and God bless.